All right, so today I am going to be talking about Skyslope. Skyslope is our transaction management system where you will create your listings and transactions for your broker's approval. Of course, first you're going to want to log into Skyslope. So go to skyslope.com and click login. Your username is going to be your email address. And then the password is going to be something that you have created yourself. If for some reason you have forgotten your password, of course, just go ahead and click on Forgot Password, and it will walk you through the steps. And then once everything's filled in, go ahead and click on Sign In. When you sign in, it's going to bring you straight to the Skyslope dashboard. So the first thing I would like to point out is Skyslope support. Skyslope has an amazing support team that is available 24-7. You can contact them by clicking on the little person up here. When you hover over it, it will say support. Click on it and it's going to open up a new window where you can either start a chat, email them, or call them. Don't forget that you are always welcome to come straight to us here at corporate and we will be happy to help you and answer any questions that you have. But like I said before, Skyslope is available 24-7. So always remember that they are available to help you as well. Okay. If you need to update any information, such as your email address or mailing address, go ahead and click on your name at the top right-hand corner of the page. Then you will click on My Account. Here is where you can go ahead and update any of your information, including email, um, your phone number down here. You have your mailing address here, and you can update any other information as well. In the Notifications tab, you can turn on any email notifications which you wish to receive. The signature tab will be will put a signature at the bottom of your emails that are sent out from Skyslope. Change password is where you can update your password information. Remember that your password does need to contain six or more characters as well as one uppercase letter and one number. And then lastly, the directory is where you can upload or create contacts. I'm going to go ahead and go back to my dashboard and show you everything on there. I went back to my dashboard just by clicking on the logo up here in the top left hand corner. So as you can see here at the top of the dashboard, it's going to give you a breakdown of what you have going on each month. So you have your scheduled closings for the month, you have active and pending transactions, you have closed transactions this month. And then you have expired escrows and listings this month, month as well. You'll see that when I click on a specific one, such as active, it's going to bring up all my active properties within the system. So it is just a nice and quick way to access your different transactions. I'm going to go ahead and go back to the dashboard. Once again, by just clicking on the logo, that's going to be basically your home button. So um, first, if you are representing the buyer, you will need to create a transaction here. And then manage transactions is where you will find all your transactions within the systems. If you are representing the seller, you will need to create a listing. And then of course, manage listings is where you will be able to manage any listings that you have. We also have DigiSign where you can obtain digital signatures on your forms and much more, which I will go ahead and further explain later on in the training. The incomplete checklist is going to bring up the files where your checklist has not yet been completed. Any files that have been canceled are going to appear in the canceled contracts section. Once a file has closed, we will move that, that into the access archives for you. And then there is also a tasks and reminders section where you can set reminders for yourself. 
and a working document section where you can upload any documents that may not be specific to a certain transaction. The first thing I'm going to do is show you how to create a listing. Remember that a listing will need to be created when you are representing the seller. So to create a listing, the first thing you're going to do is click on Create Listing. You will need to go ahead and input the address. When you do this, a few of the required fields will be automatically filled in. You can see that the required fields are the ones with the red stars next to it. Any of the fields that are not shown as required, you don't have to fill in, but of course we do encourage you to fill in as much information as possible. To make things easier for today's training, I'm going to go ahead and pull an example of a listing that I already have created. I'm just going to go back to my dashboard and click on Manage Listings. When I do this, any of the expired or active listings will appear at the top of my page and any canceled listings will appear at the bottom. To open up a file, just go ahead and single click on it. So as you can see, I do have my listing already created. You can see that I have all of my required fields filled in. Once all your required fields are filled in, you'll go ahead and click on Next. That is going to bring you over to the Contacts tab. So for a listing, the only contact information you will need to fill in is for the seller. Once that's done, you'll go ahead and click on Submit, and it's going to bring you to the Checklist tab. This is where you're going to upload all of your required documents. When you create a listing, these boxes under Status will say Required, depending on what documents are needed. Once you upload all of the required documents, they will be reviewed by your broker. If a file says incomplete, that means that your broker has not accepted the document that was uploaded. If that does happen, they will go ahead and write a comment in this comment box letting you know the issue that needs to be corrected. If your broker has approved the document, it will show as completed. Next is the Documents tab. This is a place where you can upload a document if there is not a place for it in the checklist. But of course, if there is a place in the checklist, you do need to upload it there. To upload documents and assign them to your checklist, what you'll do is you'll go ahead and click on Attach next to the document you are wanting to upload. For example, I'm going to choose Addendums. Then, if you already have the document in your Documents tab, you can click on Assign over here. Or, you would click on Attach like I did before. And if it is not in Skyslope, you'll click on Upload Document. You'll choose the file from your computer and click Open. And it will go ahead and start the upload and attach it into your checklist. Okay? Let's say that you scan in multiple documents together. I have an example here. So let's say that I went ahead and scanned in my referral agreement, my MLS sheet, and my seller's property disclosure. Well, in order to put those in your checklist, you're going to need to separate them. So to do that, you would go ahead and click on Split right here. The first thing I'm going to split is going to be my referral agreement, which is the first three pages. So I'll go ahead and start typing in referral agreement. Okay, and that's going to be page one to page three. Okay, and then the next one I would just type in, my next page is going to be my MLS sheet. So I'll type in MLS sheet, and as you can see, it will come up at the bottom if it's in your um, checklist. So then I have my MLS sheet, which is page four to four. 
And lastly, I have my seller's property disclosure. So we'll just pretend that that is the right one, which is going to be page five and five, okay? Um, once you have everything that's split up that's in here, go ahead and click on split and assign. And it's going to go ahead and split up the documents. So if I go to my checklist, you'll see that they are now in review for my broker to look at. Okay. If for some reason you go ahead and upload the document to the wrong area, no big deal. Just go ahead and click on this X to go ahead and remove the document. Okay. All right. Lastly, your log is where it's going to show you the time and date that your documents were uploaded, as well as any communication that goes on within the file. It's a really great way to keep everything together in the, in, in the file, so you can go back and look on it if you need to. A very easy way to keep track of emails in regards to a specific, specific file and have all your conversation conversations logged is to use this SkySlope email address. For example, let's say I emailed my broker about needing to know what else I need to do to have my document approved. I can go ahead and CC this SkySlope email address in the email and it's going to log my conversation here. You can also send documents to your file by emailing them to this address and they'll go ahead and show up in your Documents tab. Um, a new Skyslope email address is going to be automatically created for each of your listings or your transactions. The last thing I want to note about this Skyslope email is you do want to make sure you CC the email address. If you BCC it, it will not log. So once again, if you are CCing, make sure you are CCing, not BCCing. And then the task tab is just a place for you to add new tasks for a specific file. Okay. Let's say you have an accepted offer on a listing and you need to convert the listing to a transaction. To do that, you're just going to go ahead and click on accepted contract here in the checklist. This accepted contract button will only show up when all of the required documents have been uploaded. Okay. The next thing I want to do is show you how to create a transaction. I'm going to go back to my dashboard. Of course, the first thing I'm going to do is click on Create Transaction. Just like a listing, you're going to input the address, and when you do this, a few of the required fields will automatically be filled in. Just like I did for the listing for today's training, I'm going to open up a transaction that I already have created by going to my Manage Transactions and clicking on the, my example here. As you can see, I already have all of my required fields filled in. You do want to make sure you are selecting the correct checklist type. This is going to determine which documents are required in the checklist for that specific sale. So, of course, if you have a referral, it's going to be different documents than if you have a traditional sale. Okay, same with leases. That's going to be different than a referral and a traditional sale. So, please make sure you are checking the correct checklist type. Once again, once you have all of this filled in, you're going to click Next. It's going to bring you to your Contacts tab. As you can see, I have all of my required information filled in. For the seller, you'll also need to input the purchaser, as well as the title or escrow company. Okay. The checklist, the documents, and the log tab are all going to work the same exact way as they do in a listing. For today, the main thing I would like to focus on is going to be the Commission tab. So now I'm going to show you how to complete this Commission tab. Let me go ahead and delete these so we can start fresh. All right, so let's start up here at the top. 
So the Commission tab. This is how our processing department will issue your Commission Disbursement Authorization, or for short, your CDA. This is going to be sent out to the title or escrow company, showing you being paid directly at closing, as long as your files are all in compliance. So you do want to make sure that you have all fields filled in correctly. The sale price will automatically be filled in here based off what was inputted in the transaction tab, as that is one of your required fields in the transaction tab. So here I have my sale price as $900,000. You will need to type in the listing commission percentage and the sale commission percentage. Please note that you can type in a dollar amount here, but the system will not let you do both. Once you have that filled in, it will automatically calculate the office gross commission on sale. For this one, would be $9,000. If you have a transaction coordinator, you will need to type in their fee in the transaction coordinator fee box and their name in the transaction coordinator name box. If you are paying out a referral, you will need to type in the amount they are receiving, either by percentage or dollar amount, as well as their name or company information. You will also need to upload a W-9 here in the Commission tab, or if there's a place for it in your checklist, you can upload it there as well. For agents on a Plan C, for every transaction, you owe $65 E&O insurance. The only time you won't owe this $65 for E&O is on leases and referrals. Also, for Plan C agents, your transaction fee per deal will usually be $360. The only time this will change is if your commission is under $2,000. Then it would just be 10% plus the $65 E&O. So let's say your commission is $1,000. We're only gonna take 10% of that 1,000, so this transaction fee would only be $100, and the $65 E&O. So we would only take $165 in total out of your commission. Okay. You will finish the commission tab by filling in the disbursement information section down here at the bottom. This is going to be where you list the breakdown of everything. For example, when I click on transaction fee from the drop down menu, you will see that it automatically fills in Alice and James as well as our mailing address and the amount. This is going to be the same thing for E&O insurance. Please note that these amounts here will only automatically fill in if you have them filled in up here first. Then you're going to select agent. You'll go through and select your name. You will see that your mailing address automatically fills in, but you are able to edit this. For example, if you would like your funds wired to you, you can go ahead and put wiring instructions in here. Then you would go ahead and enter your final amount after all deductions. Okay. The other deduction section is going to be for other items that you can't find under disbursement information. So such as a transaction coordinator or a referral to an outside brokerage. You would go ahead and type that in here and the amount that they're getting. Okay, and as you can see, it does populate automatically another box. So if you had more things to type in, you can keep going and keep going and keep going if you needed to, of course. Okay, once you are all finished with this, you do want to make sure that you click on submit up here. That's going to save your information. And when you do this, your um, the checklist tab will go ahead and appear at the top. So now that your commission tab is complete, what's next? Well, of course, you do want to make sure that all of your required documents have been uploaded in the checklist tab. 
once your broker reviews all the documents and they are all in the completed status, except for any closing documents. The closing documents, such as the closing statement, um, and then the approved disbursement is the CDA that corporate will go ahead and upload here for you. So once all your um, documents are completed, you will get a nice email from your broker saying, congratulations, your file is now approved for final review with corporate. Once you get that email, the file is sent to our processing department to issue a CDA or commission disbursement authorization. Your CDA will be sent to you and the title or escrow company. We will also, like I said before, upload a copy into this Skyslope checklist. Please take note, once your file is approved, it can take our processing department up to 48 hours to have your CDA issued and sent out. We will do our best to have it sent out to you as soon as possible. Let me show you an example of what a CDA looks like. Go ahead and click on this one. So as you can see, it shows the agent getting paid directly at closing. It has your mailing address here at the bottom for the title company to send your check. And then it also shows that portion coming to Alice and James. All right. So now that you know about creating a listing and a transaction, let me briefly talk about our 48-hour rule. So our 48-hour rule means that you have 48 hours to upload any fully executed documents, meaning that all parties have signed. If you are missing something, such as an initial or a date, you still need to upload the document. It's just going to be marked incomplete in your checklist until you obtain what you are missing. It is very important that your documents are provided for broker review as quickly as possible. Our goal here is for you to get paid at closing. So the sooner your documents are uploaded, the sooner we can issue your CDA, showing you being paid directly. With that said, as long as your file is in compliance, there is no reason title or escrow should not send your check directly to you. But of course, there will be times that they will send a full check made out to Alice and James to our corporate office. If that does happen, don't worry, because once the check is processed through our systems, we will direct deposit your funds into the account we have on file. All right. All right. So once a CDA is issued, when you open the Manage Transactions section, the status next to the file in which the CDA was issued will show as closed, and it's a dark red color. This little box will be dark red, and it will say closed right here. And it's also going to be moved to the closed transactions waiting to be archived section. Um, we will only archive the file once we have confirmed that the property has closed and the closing statement has been uploaded. So. When the file is in the closed status, there are a few things you won't be able to do yourself. The first thing, you are not able to extend the closing date. If you need the closing date extended, you will need to upload an extension addendum into the Skyslope checklist and then email support at ajicorporate.com and we will go ahead and do that for you. Let's say that you your file is in the pending or expired status here you and you need to cancel a file. You can easily do that by just clicking the cancel transaction button over here on the right hand side. But if the file is showing as closed, you will not be able to do that without corporate's assistance. So please you will need to upload a cancellation and once again email support at ajicorporate.com and we will cancel the file for you. Any changes that need to be made to the sales price, the commission, the title company, 
or anything else that shows on your CDA, you will need to send us a CDA revision. And that's going to be the next thing I'm going to show you how to do. So you will want to go to your Manage Transactions, just like I'm under right now. You will single click the file in which you need the revised CDA for, and I'm going to choose my example here. Then you will go to the Documents tab. You will find the original Commission Disbursement Authorization. You can go ahead and preview it by hovering over, just to make sure that you are choosing the correct one. Once you have confirmed it's the correct one, go ahead and click on the box on the right-hand side of the document. And then you are going to click on DigiSign up here. Once I click on DigiSign, that's going to open up a new page. Okay. So as you can see, it already has this document selected, which is the one that I had selected previously in my Documents tab. So you don't need to really do anything on this page. All you're going to do is click on Next. Go ahead and select your name over on the left-hand side as you will be the one making the revision to the CDA. You will also, of course, need to send a copy to our support team. So you'll click on New Recipient, type in AJI Support, as well as our email, support at ajicorporate.com. Under the role, select Other. You keep the signing order as one, and then select receives a copy under the type. Then you'll click save, and you'll know that you did everything correct because it will go ahead and say, who needs a copy, AGI support here. Once you see that, you're good to go, click next. Now you'll see that the CDA appears on the screen. The first thing you'll do is select Writable here at the top. And then you're going to need to click on the areas which need to be changed. So let's say that the sell price on this has changed to $890,000. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and just click once right next to the sell price, and I'm going to type in $890,000. So I'll type that in here. Since the sell price has changed, this is also going to change my commission amount. So the total disbursements will need to be updated. And that is going to be 1% of 890,000. So we'll type in 8,900. So that's changed. I still owe my 425 to Alice and James Estates and Homes. So my commission that's showing payable to me will also need to be updated. Once again, just click once. That's going to need to be updated to 8,475. So it's this 8,900 minus the 425 gives me my total for the update. If there are any other changes that need to be made, you can create additional boxes for that information. All right. Once you've made all the needed adjustments, you will click on send at the top right hand corner. Feel free to type in a quick message to our corporate team. For example, you can say, please update my CDA. Thank you. And then you'll click on send for signatures. Then once this box pops up, click on sign now. Select a signature from the list. Click on I agree. When the document appears again, click on Start, and it's going to take you through to confirm that all the amounts are correct. So we have 890000 that is correct. My commission is also correct, and the total disbursements is correct as well. So you'll keep on clicking Next until the box appears. Then you'll click on Submit. At that time, your completed document will be sent directly to the corporate team to adjust and issue the revised CDA. The document will also be logged automatically in the Skyslope transaction, 
So if we go back to home, click on manage transactions, click on my example. If you go to the documents tab, here is my revision. So it saves all the prices here. And that's what is also sent to our corporate team for us to update your CDA as well. But um, like I said, it does log into your documents tab. So that is a really easy way to send us your revision requests. All right. The last thing I want to show you is how you would print out a transaction summary for your files if you would like to have a hard copy for your records. So you'll go to Manage Transactions. Go ahead and single click on the appropriate file. In the upper right hand corner, click on Transaction Summary. This will open up a full transaction summary that you can save to your computer or print out to have on hand. You can see it has just about everything on here. It has all your commission here. It has the seller, purchaser, title, all the details of the property. So it has everything on here that's in your SkySlope file. Like I said, some people do like these to have a hard copy for your files. Um, so I just wanted to show you guys how you can go ahead and get that, okay?